Like a lot of sports, tennis can seem confusing at first, but the rules are not all that complicated, which should allow you to pick up on a pretty good understanding of a really fun game in just a few minutes. So we're going to break down the court, how the points are won and kept track of, and then we'll finish off by taking a look at a few different shots. The first thing you'll notice when looking at a tennis court is that they have different surfaces. This one, for example, is a grass court. Other popular surfaces, maybe the one at your local park, is probably a hard surface, and there are also clay surfaces as well. These could have some effect on play, and some players will be better at playing on different surfaces than others. Something that every court will have in common, though, is the layout. In the middle, you will find the net. And on either side of the net, the court is a mirror image. The names of the lines aren't particularly important to remember for now, but to point out a few things. Um, these are known as the service lines, and in the middle, perpendicular to the net, is the center service line. We'll get back to why these are important in just a few seconds. Next are these notches in the back, which are called the center marks, and finally, the singles sidelines. We'll come back to the outer sidelines later. One important thing to note about the lines is that during the game, if the ball lands on the line, it is in, kind of like uh, baseball. So let's jump into how a game is played, and hopefully the purpose of all these lines should quickly become apparent. Every tennis match starts with a serve. So our player on the left here is going to throw the ball into the air and hit it over the net. For his serve, he must stand behind the baseline, and he must also stand off to one side of the center mark. He will throw the ball into the air, and he must hit it into the space in front of the service line on the opposite side of the center mark he is standing on. So this one here. This is called the service box. Now at this point, the other player will be able to return the serve by hitting it anywhere between the single sidelines and in front of the baseline. The service lines don't matter to him because he isn't serving. And then at this point, our server would receive the ball and hit it back. And this time, just like his opponent, he can hit it anywhere um, on the other side of the court. If at any point the ball was hit outside the sidelines or into the net or over the baseline, the other player would get a point. A player would also get a point if their opponent allows the ball to bounce more than once, and you can only hit the ball once to get it back over the net. Players will usually allow the ball to bounce, but other than on the serve, you don't have to let it bounce if you don't want to. And so the players will continue to hit the ball back and forth, trying to keep it in until it goes out or until someone fails to return it. Hitting it back and forth like this is called a rally, and it could end very quickly, or it could take a long time. It all depends on the players. After one player or the other gets a point, the server would get the ball back to serve again. This time, though, he would switch to the other side of the center mark, and he would have to hit the ball into the other service box. And again, the other player can return the ball anywhere between the sidelines and in front of the baseline. One final thing to note on serves is that the player who is serving gets two chances to hit the ball in. If on their first serve the ball goes into the net or lands outside the service box, the judge will call it out and they will have their second serve. If they fail though to get their second serve in as well, it would be a point for the other player. The exception to that is that if on the serve the ball hits the net and still lands inside the service box. If that happens, it is called a let, and the official will call out let, and the server will essentially get a do-over. So a let isn't really a good thing or a bad thing for either player. So now that we know where the players need to hit the ball and how to get a point, let's look at how these points add up. Rather than simply counting up points 1, 2, 3, 4, Tennis instead uses the terms love, 15, 30, 40, and then game. Nobody really knows why this is the case. Some theories say that it has something to do with a clock face, but it's been that way sometimes since the 14 or 1500s, and even though it can be a bit confusing at first, it seems to work fine. 
So regardless of who is winning, the server's points are always said first. So if the server gets the first point, he would be winning the game 15 love. If the other player gets the next point, it would then be 15 15 or 15 all. And it would continue that way until we get up to game. One thing tennis is big on though is that you must win by two. So if the game is at 40 to 30 and the server gets the next point, then he would win because he would have two more points than his opponent. If, however, the score gets to 40 to 40, the next point would not be the game winner. Instead of our score getting higher, something like 60 to 40, something like that, when the score is 40 to 40, rather than saying 40 to 40 or 40 all, it is now said that the score is deuce. At this point, we stop using the numbers, and the player who scores the next point is said to have the advantage. So if Serena Williams is playing Maria Sharapova, and the score is at deuce, which is, again, the same thing as 40-40, and Serena gets the next point, the score would then just be advantage Serena Williams. If she gets the next point after that, she would win the game. If, however, the score is advantage Serena and Sharapova gets the next point, it would then go back to deuce, or be deuce number two. And so it would continue like that until somebody finally got two consecutive points after it was deuce, and thus wins by two. This is one spot where you could potentially go back and forth for a very long time because there's no limit to how many deuces you can have. Finally, though, somebody will win the game. If I haven't made it clear, I probably should, that a player will serve for an entire game, whether they win or lose, and then they will switch. For the next game, the other player will serve, and then they'll continue to alternate uh, serving each game. Our games will make up a set. Typically, and this could all depend on the level of play, but I'm talking about the, the generally the pros. So if you turn a match on on TV, this will probably be what the scoring that they're using. But typically a set will last until one player wins six games. And again, you have to win by two. There is, however, a limit on winning by two when it comes to sets. So if a set is tied at five games to five, the next game will make it six games to five. So even though they've won six games, they have not won by two, and so they will play another game. Now, if the same player wins that game, they will win that set seven to five. However, if the other player wins and ties it at six games to six, then they will play what is called a tiebreaker. In a tiebreaker, both players will alternate serving, and it's the first to seven points. For whatever reason, tiebreakers are counted one, two, three. Um, but again, you will have to win by two. So I won't dwell too much on tiebreakers, but you get the point. Um, eventually, whoever wins the tiebreaker will win that set seven games to six. Finally, the sets comprise a match, which the match is the whole game between the two players. For the men, a match is a best of five sets or the first to win three. And for women, it is the best of three or the first to win two. Depending on the number of games that each set takes, this could mean a match can go pretty quickly or take a very long time. A lot of deuces, long rallies, or both players winning a close number of games can mean that the match will probably take a few hours, so you'll probably be pretty tired by the end of it. So if all the games and sets and matches was confusing, perhaps this will clarify it. If you watch a match on TV, the score will appear in the corner in a box that will look something like this. Now obviously these names are our two players, Serena Williams and Maria Sharapova, and beside the one who is serving in the game, there will be a little arrow. So Serena right now is serving. Beside that, in the green, is the score of the current game. So we can see that Serena is winning 15 love right now. In the next column are in the next column are the sets, starting with the first one. So it says that Maria won the first set six games to four. And we are currently in the second set, which is tied at two games to two. And again, the first player to win two sets will win the match. So now that we have the way scoring works uh, figured out, and if you haven't completely wrapped your head around it, don't worry. I'd recommend watching a match or two on TV and 
and a two or three games into that match, you should have things pr- figured out pretty well. Um, but for now, let's switch to the different types of shots. And these are not necessarily part of the rules, but it will make things a lot less confusing when you hear an announcer talk on TV about a good forehand. First of all, this is what a serve will typically look like. Um, as we know, the server stands behind the baseline here, and she will throw the ball over her head and hit it. Um, she's actually very close to the line, um, the baseline on this one, so she'll have to be careful uh, not to step on it uh, at any point during the serve. And because you have two chances to get the serve in, the first serve will probably be hit as hard as possible, um, which will make it difficult for the opponent to, to return and control. Whereas the second one um, will be focused more on getting the ball in uh, rather than speed. So here's another shot. This guy is playing on a grass court, but again, he's behind the baseline. And it can actually it can take years uh, to get comfortable throwing the ball up to the right height. And while it may, might look easy, um, it can be tough to get the serve in, especially when you're trying to hit the ball. You know, some of these professionals can get it up around... 100 miles an hour. After the serve, the two main uh, shots or grips are the forehand, which you can see here. This girl is right-handed, so she's going to hit the ball like this with the racket out away from her body. And the opposite of that is the backhand, which will mean that the racket is across your body, like this girl who is also right-handed. And in this case, she's using both hands, so this would be a two-handed backhand, but you can also have a one-hand backhand as well. Some players have very good forehands, but are not so good at their backhand. Some are the opposite. Um, It takes a lot of practice to to master both. You probably won't be able to get uh, very far with only one. So so every player has to balance the amount of time they spend working on either their forehand or their backhand or their serve as well. The final thing we'll look at in this video is how doubles works, which is when both sides have two players. You may have noticed when we were looking at the lines um, that the single sidelines are not actually the edge of the court and that we have these two areas on either side that are unused and in singles play that is correct. They are not used at all. These two areas, they're called the alleys. Um, The only time they come into play is during a doubles match. And so then the out-of-bounds lines shift to these lines. So during a doubles match, the serve will still be the same. The server still has to hit the ball into the service box. Um, But now the return can be anywhere on the other side of the court. So if the ball were to bounce here, it would be out during a singles match, but it would be in during a doubles match. And likewise, the subsequent return can then be anywhere on that side of the court. That's all that really uh, changes for doubles. So now that you have a general understanding of how that works, you should be able to turn on a match on TV um, or look for one online. There's lots of tennis online and be able to pick up on the pace and the the general uh, way things work pretty quickly. So to wrap things up, um, we're going to answer one question that probably everybody wonders the first time that they hear about um, the scoring system in tennis. And that is why instead of using the number zero, Why do they call it love? And the real origin of that, like the rest of the scoring system, is unknown. So we we don't know for sure. One theory is that the French word for the phrase the egg, and I guess an egg looks like a zero, um, is the French word is loof, which I guess sounds a bit like love. Um, So that's one theory. But another story that I've heard, um, I think I like this one a little better, is that the players who will often have zero points Um, yet continue to play the game anyway, are not playing because they are good, but they are playing out of enjoyment, which is to say they are playing for the love of the game.